What's up guys? Welcome back. Leo Pazzo Productions. Thank you very much for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to be having a closer look at this brand new camera made by Avcans. This is the Avcans Go 4K wireless live streaming camera. All right, guys, let's go ahead and quickly get a little bit more familiar with the Avcans Go camera. Starting off over here towards the front, I'll remove this magnetic lens cap. As you see, this camera does support up to 4K Ultra HD, and it does also have a three times optical zoom, along with some digital zoom as well. You can see over here, we do have a tally light, which also is gonna give us some information, for an example, when we are recording, when we're live streaming, and some other camera status indications as well. Just above and below that, we do have the microphone phone inputs as this camera does have internal microphones as well. Having a closer look over here towards the back of the camera, we do have the power on and off switch. Just press it and hold it for a few seconds to power on and off. Just below that, we do have these four LED lights to indicate the battery life of the camera. Just below that, we do have a UVC output that we can connect to our laptops or PCs, for an example, via UVC, which does support up to 4K 30 frames per second. Just below that, we do have a micro HDMI, also supporting up to 4K 30 frames per second. Here we have a 3.5 millimeter input as far as our audio either a line in or a microphone in and just below that we do have a micro SD card slot which is going to allow us to record directly to this camera if we want to. If we go ahead and flip it over here towards the bottom we do have quarter 20 thread mounting option and we do also have this adapter over here that we can actually unscrew and turn it around and it's going to give us a 3 8 thread mounting option as well which is really cool. Other than that the Build quality is made out of plastic or some kind of ABS hard plastic. It feels like it has some weight to it. Overall, well built. Now let's go ahead and get a little bit more familiar with the quality and some additional features. For an example, supporting NDI HX3 along with SRT and some other additional features that you guys may be interested in. All right, here we go. We're testing out the Avcans Go 4K wireless live streaming camera. Right now for audio, I have the Rode Wireless Pro connected to the microphone input jack. This is what the video quality is looking like outdoors in this environment. Um, I'm zoomed all the way out. I am using autofocus right now with the camera. I have TOF on, so time of flight as far as the autofocus. I am recording right now to the micro SD card at 4K, 16 megabits per second. We got the tally light on on the front of the camera over there so I can see that it's recording and what status the camera's at. Image settings, that's actually one of the settings that I needed to adjust for outdoors. So one suggestion, you wanna come to image settings and come down to the bottom where it says anti-flicker. And if you're gonna be using it outdoors, I highly suggest that you need to set it to outdoor settings because when I had it to uh, 60 Hertz, when I was using it indoors, um, in an outdoor environment, it was just way too bright. So setting it to outdoors, telling the camera that you're filming outdoors in this environment is definitely going to help. The other thing I wanted to test right now is the zoom. So we have three times optical zoom. So right now we're zoomed out all the way. I'm just going to head back over here. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four. There's four car spaces between me and the camera right now. I look pretty small on the screen, but let's go ahead and zoom in. All right. I could have positioned the camera a little bit facing upwards a bit but I think you guys get the general idea let's go ahead and zoom out a bit so there we are we're zoomed out that was zoomed in all the way let's do um, a quick little auto focus test how about that looks like it's focused on me looks nice in detail all right now we're going to bring the sunglasses nice and close to the camera and see if it focuses on the sunglasses yep it grabbed focus pretty good let's move the sunglasses and it's back in focus on me We'll try again, sunglasses. Yep, it's in focus on the sunglasses, nice and sharp, looks good. And we'll come back to see if it focuses on me. Perfect, looks like it's doing a good job. 
All right, guys, check it out. So here we are onto the laptop, and I want to show you guys how easy it is to connect the Avcans Go camera to your laptop or your PC via UVC. What does that mean, and how do you do it? Well, let's go ahead and take you step by step. First off, we're going to use the included cable that comes with the camera. On one end is a USB A 3.0, and on the other end over here is a USB C. So what we want to do: take the USB C end, and we're going to plug it in over here at the back of the camera. Perfect. The other end of the cable, we're going to simply plug it into our laptop. Perfect, that's done. So now again, over here on the mobile phone app, just one setting, you wanna confirm that it is set. USB output setting, you wanna make sure that it's set to UVC. Perfect, so now we're gonna come over here to OBS. This can be done with any other software, for an example, vMix, or even uh, Teams, or Zoom, whatever software or live streaming platform that you wanna use, you can just connect it like any other webcam. So what we wanna do over here in OBS, for an example, underneath sources, we're gonna click on this plus icon to add a new source. And in this case, we're gonna be selecting video capture device. So let's go ahead and select that. Over here, we can give it a name, for an example, Avcans Go and we're going to select OK. And now from over here, from the device dropdown, we want to select which camera we want to actually input. And the Avcans Go camera is actually listed as 4K USB camera video. That's the one that we want to select right over there. Perfect. And you can see the image pops up. So a few other settings that I just wanted to show you guys over here. We can scroll down as far as the resolution and we can use custom resolution. And now from the resolution drop down menu, you can see that we have a few options, 4K, 1080p, 720 and so on. So we're going to be using the 4K option and frames per second. I like to just double check. We're going to set it to 30 and the rest of the settings over here, we're going to just leave these all by default. We're going to click on OK. So you can see that we have the image over here but it looks quite big so what we want to do is just resize this rescale it so it actually fits in this box over here of our window okay so we'll just bring this top corner there we'll bring this bottom corner to there and perfect here we go and now we'll just put the camera straight up so one thing i wanted to point out to you sometimes when you connect the camera as we just did you'll notice that your white balance the color from the camera looks a little bit off so what i suggest to do again over here in the mobile app you just want to come over here to image settings and you just want to click on white balance for an example again mine is set to static color white balance that's what i uh, suggest to use and you want to just go ahead and select on that and again right now i currently have the color temperature Temperature set to 5600 that's what I want but just in case if the color is not accurate the way that you want it to be or there may be the way that you have it set I highly suggest come over here to color temperature and just slide it around maybe once or twice and then bring it back to the setting that you want so right now we're back at 5600 that's exactly where I want it and the color is looking really accurate so that's it just in case you guys do experience that and we're pretty much connected we're ready to go we can start recording we can start live streaming right from here from OBS or whatever software you want to use so perfect now that you guys have seen the UVC connection on how easy it is to do next I wanted to show you how to connect this camera via NDI because this camera does support NDI and also SRT as well which is going to allow us to connect our camera to different devices for an example wirelessly just because they are on the same network so for me to go ahead and demonstrate that let's totally uh, delete the Avcans go over here via UVC we're going to select on that we'll press delete are you sure to delete it yes we are sure to delete that input so we're going to totally remove the cable here so the camera is not connected to any cables whatsoever, as you see. So again, for you to take advantage of NDI, the camera does need to be connected, for an example, to Wi-Fi or data, some sort of internet, as you can do over here onto the mobile phone. So once the camera is connected, now you want to come over here again to OBS, for an example, or whatever software you want to use. In this case, we're going to come here to Sources. We're going to click on the plus icon. And over here, we do have an NDI plugin that I did install. So your OBS, if you do not see this NDI option, it is a free plugin that you can download online and install it over here which is going to allow you to add NDI sources, which is definitely a really nice feature. So let's go ahead and click on this. We can go ahead and rename this. We'll rename this Avcans Go NDI. Perfect. We're going to select on OK. And over here, now this very first drop down menu, we need to actually select what source do we want to use as an input via NDI. And in this case, right over here, mine is currently listed as Q03ZW and then the IP address of the Avcans Go. Those other two options over here are other options, which is not the Avcans Go. So we want to select that one right over there. All these other settings, we're going to leave them by default as they are. 
and bingo. We're going to select on OK. And there is our video coming from the Avcans Go. Let's go ahead and pick up the camera. Yes, guys, this is NDI right over here. And the image quality is looking good. The latency is very minimal. Very impressed, to be honest with you. The color looks good. The image looks good. The autofocus is doing a great job. The other thing that I wanted to point out, again, an NDI setting on the mobile app. Let's go ahead and take a quick look. Let's just put this camera down over here. So again, on the mobile phone over here, we do have NDI options, NDI settings. You just want to go ahead and select on that. And you can see the resolution is currently set to 1080p but we can go ahead and bring, the, bring this all the way up to 4K if we want to, and we need to enable NDI. So that's the other thing that you want to make sure that is turned on. By default, when you first download the app and get everything set up, NDI is not on, so you need to turn it on over here within the app for it to actually work. All right, guys, check it out. Here's another test with the Avcans Go camera. So right now I am recording this section of the video to the micro SD card that I inserted at the back of the camera. The camera is also set to 4K resolution at 16 megabits per second, which is the highest resolution and the highest megabits per second. And I am in a well-lit environment, which is using the auto exposure, which is the average auto exposure setting. I'm also using the autofocus as well. Um, I will also mention that the camera zoomed in right now times two, which is still within the optical zoom range. Again, this camera does support up to three times optical zoom, which is a really nice feature. And anything beyond three times is going to be a digital zoom. As far as audio, you guys are listening to the Rode wireless microphone kit, which is connected to the back of the camera right now. The receiver of this microphone kit is connected via the microphone input, via that 3.5 millimeter jack. And as you see over here, I have the lavalier microphone. So I wanna know what you guys think on how the video image quality looks like. How does the audio sound and uh, yeah my next test that I'm going to be doing right after this one is all the same video settings but then I'm going to be switching over as far as the audio to the internal microphone that we have on the Avcans Go. All right, guys, so here's another test. You guys are currently listening to the internal microphone on the Avcans Go. The camera is approximately about maybe four to five feet away from me right now. This is how the audio is sounding using the internal microphone. All right, guys, check out this feature. The Avcans Go actually supports gesture controls. It's going to allow us to zoom in and zoom out with our hand gestures. We can enable the hand gestures within the mobile phone app, but one thing that I will point out, it will not allow us to enable the hand gesture control with any of our resolutions set to 4K. They all need to be set to 1080p maximum. So what do I mean exactly by that? Well, your HDMI output, your live streaming, and your SD card recording, none of those can be set to 4K. They all have to be set to maximum at 1080p for the gesture control to allow you to enable it within the mobile phone app. So let's just go ahead and quickly demonstrate. How do you zoom out? Just make a fist. How do you zoom in? Give a little high five, just like that. And you know what? Check this out. This is how responsive it is. Yes, I'm watching it over here on the mobile phone app, monitoring myself, zooming in and zooming out. And I think that's a good little position right over there. It works really nicely. It's definitely going to be helpful. Maybe you don't want to use the mobile phone app to zoom in and zoom out. Maybe you're doing a demonstration or presentation and you want your hands to be a little bit more free. Just like that, you can use the gesture controls. Really nice. And again, this is also a test in itself because you guys are looking at this video at 1080p at 16 megabits per second. All right, guys, check this out. While I was actually editing this video, Video, Avcans released a new app which is called Avcans Live. The previous app that I was using was called Avcans Go. So this Avcans Live, I want to go ahead and get you guys a little bit more familiar briefly. So I've already downloaded, I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. I've already connected the camera here, same process that I used before, just connecting it via my home Wi-Fi. And now you can see over here we do have some additional settings just to briefly go ahead and take a look. We can click on transitions and now we're going to allow us to select a few different transitions because this app is more focused on a multi-camera app that's going to allow you to connect multiple of these cameras together. We're going to be able to preview all of them over here and we're going to be able to incorporate them all into our live stream as far as transitions, audio, recording, and live streaming and much more. So let's just go ahead and give you an example. We can add a new effect over here. We can add text, a time, uh, we got image, picture in picture, full screen overlay, web, 
and countdown as well so we can add all of these which is a nice addition to this setup over here and as far as audio tab over here you can see that we got my audio level mixer as well we can mute the audio adjust the levels monitor it as well for each camera that we have connected next over here we do have our recording tab which is going to allow us to turn on the recording also set our resolution as well 1080p along with up to uh, 1440 and uh, we have the video the kilobits the audio max duration and where uh, it's actually going to be recording it to for an example to the local file of the SD card so let's just exit out of here and also we can configure our live stream so RTMP YouTube Facebook Twitch etc so we can go ahead and configure the server URL the stream key the quality of a recording etc right over here nice and easy so this app also has some additional features over here so the camera that I have connected over here the Avcans Go we can see the image on this little small little preview along with this big one but if we press this little gear icon over here, we can go ahead and select that and select setup. And now that's going to allow us to see it even in a bigger view if we want to. And now we have some additional options over here. For an example, we have these settings over here, auto, manual, and area. We can also adjust the style, the white balance, standard, or custom. We can adjust the uh, uh, exposure settings from average, regional, and central. And we also can set our SD card recording resolution and megabits per second, etc. So it really nice that we have all of these additional settings over here live streaming audio output camera settings ai settings etc so i just wanted to get you guys a little bit more familiar with the latest update well guys it looks like we reached that time of the video to give you my overall thoughts and opinion of the afghan's goal do i recommend this camera Yes, I do recommend this camera for the price that we're paying and for what we're getting. What do I mean by that? Well, we got 4K image quality, being able to live stream anywhere. We got HDMI outputs, we got UVC output, we got the micro SD card, the three times optical zoom, the autofocus works nice, the long lasting battery life as well, easy to mount and set up, connect to our phones, being able to live stream anywhere using Wi Fi or data from your phone. Overall, I'm really impressed with it. The Tally Light, along with the NDI as well, the NDI license in most cases, usually cost about a hundred bucks in itself just the fact that we have that feature and it also has SRT as well so those are definitely going to be very helpful we can use this for live streaming content creation uh, being able to connect it to a live streaming video switcher as well or into OBS or vMix or whatever software you want to use overall I'm really impressed with this camera the mobile app is really nice and easy to use the gesture controls as well one thing that I would like to possibly see maybe updated in a future update would be able to allow us to add uh, another uh, gesture control so what do I mean by that well it would be nice to be able to um, have a gesture control that's going to allow us to start and stop the recording as well overall that's a wrap I definitely do appreciate you guys tuning in if you have any comments or questions or anything let me know down in the comment section down below and guys if you made it this far don't forget like share subscribe all that good stuff and we'll catch you guys on the next one till next time peace